Vivek Ramaswamy takes Mark Cuban back to school and pushes back against all this woke garbage that he has been promoting. You guys are not going to want to miss this. And that's I, I don't. I don't like using it because it causes, especially if it's somebody I might disagree. I with. like using it. I got no problem with it, even it's though it pisses it, people off. Well, that's what makes it more fun. <laughs> well, well, let's use the eye then. Fine. It's my belief, right, that these types of demographic goals, if that's your basis for setting a target, that that is incompatible with pure meritocracy. Where Absolutely not. Yeah, and that's why I know you disagree, right? So, yeah. so give, me, give me your view. That's Vivek Ramaswamy schooling billionaire and useful idiot Mark Cuban on the backwards logic of woke DEI initiatives. Welcome to Nurk News, I'm Nurkish, and I'm going to apologize in advance if you're a fan of Shark Tank and like Mark Cuban, because not only does he have a severe case of Trump derangement syndrome, but he's also a huge Kamala Harris fan and has bought into every dumb progressive talking point pushed by the left. Targets are one thing, right? They're not a quota. If it was a quota, you would be able to... Let me take a step back. There are these things called EEOC reports, the numbers for the, those vice president positions by male, female, white, black... Asian, other races, and biracial. And, and where you want to have a better portfolio outcome for your intellectual capital, there's certain things that you want to see happen. One of them is diversity. It, I think it causes us to be more divided when we see each other no, on that's, the basis of our state. Yeah, hold on, I'm going to disagree. Just, okay, just, so it's saying, look, there's a lot of women, black, Asian, whatever it may be, people that I think are not being recruited that there are a lot of people who may not have the best test scores from the best um, school, but they may have a lot of soft skills from their experiences. I'm gonna go and find the best possible candidates that I can, and they're gonna compete with everybody else. I'm gonna say this person, this woman, who, African-American woman who was from this small school that I've never recruited at, she's brilliant. And when I compare her to other people that I might hire, she's better. Now this other one, this other person, African-American, I, another small school I typically don't recruit at, they may not be good enough. I'm not going to hire them just because they're black from a small school that nobody else recruited at. They have to qualify. So then when I hire this, this African-American woman from this small school, because she has amazing soft skills, maybe not the best um, test scores, that's where equity. He keeps mentioning that he's looking for the best candidate and he's going to hire whoever it is, no matter what. Yet he keeps saying that test scores and all this stuff are irrelevant. Which is it, Mark? Are you hiring candidates based off their merit or are you hiring candidates based off their skin color or DEI or whatever nonsense term they came up with now. Why is it controversial to say, you know what, I just want to hire the best person possible for this position. Whoever is most skilled at completing this task, I will hire. I don't care if you are Indian. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're Native American. It's all rubbish. The mainstream media is only purporting this idea to keep us all divided. Look at Vivek's face while Mark is talking. It's like he can't believe what he's hearing. And keep in mind, this isn't the first time Cuban has puked out some sort of incoherent, contradictory word salad response about this sort of stuff. He's famously gotten in debates on social media with people like Elon Musk over this, and you can tell from what he said earlier that he really seems to enjoy trolling people and getting attention from pushing this sort of nonsense. Because frankly, it doesn't affect him. He got rich and made a name for himself before any of this stuff really went into effect, so it probably really doesn't hurt him the way it would a CEO of a small or medium-sized company. Equity means giving, putting people in a position to succeed, giving them the tools that they need. So she might have soft skills that, to, I, I invested in this company called Scoutable. And they'll look for um, similarities. They'll do a statistical analysis and they'll say, look, this person who we found in the middle of nowhere doesn't have a computer science degree, but the soft skills that they have matches up perfectly to our best programmers. Okay. So we're going to take a chance on that person. And the equity is we're going to give them extra computer training because we know based off of the, the data that we're using, they're very capable in ways other people aren't going to find the diversity. And we're going to give them the tools to put them in a position to succeed. Whether or not they will succeed is up to the ability of us to train that person and up to their ability to live up to what we expect with them. If they don't, They'll get a chance or two like every other employee. They'll get, you know, a report from HR saying, here's what you got to do if you're not doing well. And you still have to compete and you still have to do well. Now, notice how he said DEI doesn't have anything to do with race, but exclusively chose to focus on black women in his example, who just happened to be the victim du jour of the left. I mean, his argument for advocating for these requirements is that it's somehow beneficial for companies to hire a bunch of DEI compliance administrators 
who then seek candidates based on certain criteria and administer tests to assess their soft skills so that they can then provide funding for professional development to bring them to a desired skill level, all in the hope that the new hire can cut it as an employee. And if they can't, you're supposed to just fire them and throw away all that time, effort, and money you spent in exchange for the HR headache of terminating an employee who ranks high on the left's victim hierarchy. Different that, types of businesses need different types of diversity. That's the whole of thing. Course. So how could it yeah, be that every that. business sets the same quota or same target based on race or gender, when in fact every business should say, we need this type of diversity. People who have experience they in do. the humanities or math. They do. And they already do they by focusing do. on return on equity just, instead of focusing on actual D, capital D they diversity. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand because that CEO, if they can't hit their equity goals, right, their, their ROE, um, ROE goals, they're getting fired. Right, that's gone. Right. So just that's like, what it comes down to the ROE goals, the return on equity goal, right, which means there's right. a million factors you got to cover. Why do you right. want one blanket strat, one blanket category it's of diversity? It's not one for blanket diversity? strategy. But, but, no but, CEO but would have that, a clue. Because right? it's no, the it same, doesn't. It's the same. You're hoping race it and does. gender. Race and gender is what it always comes down to, or sexuality no. now too. So, so Nasdaq, in in making some of the arguments you have, says they want companies to report the diversity of their boards of mm -hmm. race, gender, and sexual orientation. So they get some suggestions. They say, hey, you're asking companies to report their diversity on race, gender, and sexual orientation. How about we add a couple of other metrics to the list? Veteran status, disability status. I don't remember if they said political beliefs or not, but veteran status and disability status are on there, and suppose political beliefs are also on the list. Here's what NASDAQ came back and said. Okay, after careful review, we have determined that the addition of more indices of diversity have the result of reducing the desired forms of diversity. Plain and simple, in my mind, any company who's hiring based off of DEI is racist in itself. Because like it or not, reverse racism is racism. This has been going on for years. Look at affirmative action in all these universities. You can get a perfect score on the SAT, straight A's through high school, yet still not be accepted into a university. But if you're an African-American kid from the inner city and you have far less credentials and worse grades, you can be accepted in. It's completely outrageous. Look at any company who puts these into practice. One company in particular that pops to mind is United Airlines. I want you to look up the mistakes of United Airlines in the last six months, whether it's plane doors popping off, whether it's flights being overbooked, whether it's the engine seizing. There are so many things that have happened. And the thing that terrifies me for the future is that they're eventually going to say, if you're a CEO and you don't meet these requirements, you will be fired. Everyone must adhere to these guidelines. And if you don't, you are out of here. The guy has absolutely lost his mind. I don't know what happened to Mark Cuban, but everyone used to love that guy on Shark Tank. You got to respect Vivek for just keeping his cool and just stating the facts. Meanwhile, Mark Cuban was getting testy and speaking over Vivek every single time he spoke. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. What do you think happened to Mark Cuban? Did somebody speak to this man or has he just completely lost his marbles or did he never have it to begin with? Let me know. I would love to hear that. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe, and wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.